everybody, it's Dr. Joe, and today I'm going to show you my top 10 seated hip and knee strengthening exercises. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there. So I'm going to start off with some very simple strengthening exercises, and then we're going to work our way up to the harder ones. So if the first ones are easy, stay till the end, and I'll get some harder ones for you. The first one is just gonna be a simple hip flexion exercise. So all you're doing is bringing your knee straight up as far as you comfortably can. So you can just rest your hands on your, in your lap or out to the side if you want to. And you're just gonna bring it up this way. I say alternate sides, even if you just have one side that's weak and you need to strengthen it, I always say strengthen both sides. So just kind of alternating back and forth making sure you're going slow and controlled, not going fast where you're just using momentum, but really pulling it up, using those muscles, those hip flexor muscles to bring it up. So just about 10 on each side and then you can progress from there. The next one is gonna be kind of what I call a windshield wiper. The big thing with the windshield wiper is you're doing your movements here on the bottom part of your leg. So you're not really moving your knee a whole lot. Sometimes people try and kind of bring their whole leg out like this, but your knee kind of stays in the plane here and you're just bringing your foot out and in, almost like it's a windshield wiper. But see the top part of my leg pretty much stays in one spot. It's moving a little bit, but it's not swinging like this. It's really just here where you're getting that movement at your hip and that turning at your knee right there. So you should feel it in your hips, you should feel it in your knee as well. So same thing, maybe just 10 each way. You can then switch sides and do it on this side as well. Just start off with 10. If that becomes easy, you can work your way up. With those, if you get to 20, 25, then you can start adding the band, which I'll show you a little bit later. So the next one is gonna be getting some hip ab and adduction. So for the abduction, AB, I'm just gonna use a band. And I'm gonna bring the band all the way up, just above the knee, right at the thigh area here. And so with this, you wanna keep your feet pretty close together because that's gonna allow you to come out a little bit more. So my feet are nice and close together and all I'm doing is just pulling outwards, almost like you're opening up like a clamshell or a butterfly and then just really gently coming back in. So when you're using a band, when you're using weights, you wanna control it. You don't want that band to control you. So especially when you're coming back in, you don't wanna just come in like that because that might actually irritate something even more. You really wanna control that band nice and slow coming back in. So again, just starting off with 10. If that gets pretty easy, then you can do two sets of 10, three sets of 10 get to 20, 25 and it's easy of the reps, then you can go to a higher resistant band. So then after that, you're gonna do the adduction, AD. So just take a ball, if you don't have a ball, use something like a pillow or if you have a foam roll, you can put it in between. But now you're just gonna squeeze inwards. So I'm just pushing into the ball, trying to squeeze it. So with this one, since you're not really doing a movement, hold that squeeze for a little bit. So I'm gonna squeeze in and hold that for about three to five seconds. Sometimes when you're doing this, if you have a little bit of an alignment issue in your pelvis, you might feel a little pop and that's just it readjusting itself. As long as it's not a really painful pop or if it's just a little painful and then it goes away, that's just your body trying to readjust itself. So that's not a big deal, but if it's painful and it stays, then make sure you stop and then go get a doctor or your physical therapist to check it out. So again, just about 10 of these, but holding it for that three to five seconds, getting that nice squeeze. You're getting those adductors on the inside for that one. So the next one, we're gonna go back to the band, and now we're gonna do some of those exercises we did without the band. So it's getting a little bit harder, you're getting a little bit more resistance. So this time, what you're gonna do is you put the band on your feet, so wrapped around so you can anchor it down with one foot while you're lifting with the other. So we're gonna go back into that hip flexion, but with this, you really wanna try and keep your leg in this plane because while you're using the band, since it's anchored to one side, when you come up into that hip flexion, your leg is gonna to wanna to come into the other side. 
try and keep it there. So now we're activating more muscles, we're getting resistance with that hip flexion, we're working those outer muscles as well. So try and keep it in the plane here, and you can see my foot wiggling a little bit because it's trying to pull it in, but my muscles are working to keep it out. So you can alternate sides if you want to, or if you want to do them all on one side and then switch, you can. But again, I'm going nice and controlled. I'm trying to keep that band from pulling me in, and I'm not just going up and down as fast as I can. I'm really controlling that movement. So with these, since you're activating a little more muscles, you might want to just start with five on each side and then work your way up from there because I'd rather you have, do, have you do less and not be sore and painful afterwards than doing too much and then not being able to do something for a couple days. So then the next one is going to be that going out motion. So now this is that internal rotation of the hip. So when your leg goes out, your hip is actually internally rotating. And so sometimes that's hard to think of because if your foot's going out, you think it's going outer like an external rotation. But at your hip, it's internally rotating. So with this one, you still keep the band at your feet. And if you're not quite ready just to go out like this, sometimes that's a little painful for people, just do a little step out so you're actually putting your foot down and coming back in. So you can see here, just a little put it down to kind of support it a little bit and then coming back in, but still keeping the top part of your leg kind of in one plane. So it's not moving the whole thing out like that. That's changing the muscles you're working. You're rotating that leg this way to get that internal hip rotation. So you can leave the foot up if you want to work those muscles a little bit more, or you can place the foot down and then slowly come back in. But again, really try and control that movement. Don't let that band just pull you back in. If you're feeling a lot of pain and tension in those hips when you're doing it, you might not be ready for the band yet. So just hold off on that. So now with the band, you're gonna do the external rotation of the hip. And so that's bringing the foot inwards. So it's almost like you're coming up to cross your leg into a figure four. So now this time you're gonna kind of come up and cross this way. So you might not get quite as much resistance with the band. You can change the placement of your other foot if you wanna bring it in a little bit to give you a little more resistance. So again, this time you're bringing the foot up and over to get that external rotation. So just coming up, you should feel it kind of in here now and then nice and slow coming down. You can change sides almost again, just like you're trying to cross your leg over the other. And so really just nice and smooth getting, you know, maybe five to 10, depending on how it feels in the hips and the knee. So the next ones are going to be a sit to stand exercise. I really like these because these kind of work all the big muscle groups. They work your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, all of those muscles. But it's really important to do a good form with your sit to stand. You have the chair to sit all the way down. You don't have to sit all the way down, but I always say have a chair there just in case if you feel a little unbalanced. You want your feet to be about shoulder width apart. And when you come up, you want to kind of lean forward a little bit to get your momentum going. So when you're coming up, you're doing this motion. So if you're just doing the sit to stand for an exercise, you want to come down, just tap it and then come back up. Try and keep your knees behind your toes and really stick your booty back to try and find that chair. So again, you don't have to touch it. If you just wanna do a little mini squat, you can, but you don't have to. You can actually go all the way down, kind of sit, but make it a controlled sit and then come back up. So this works a lot of the muscles. If you haven't done a lot of these before, I would just start off with maybe five and then work your way up from there because it's working a lot more than you think you are, especially if you're not going and sitting all the way back down, if you're just kind of doing a squat, but the chair is just there. So to make it a little bit harder, you can use the band again and then bring it up around your thighs, just like you did before. So it's gonna be the same concept where you're gonna try and keep your knees separated. So the band's gonna try and pull them in. If you go into your squat or your sit to stand and your knees start coming forward, that means you're probably not ready for the band. So you have to keep that good technique or you're kind of defeating the point of using the band. So really try and keep that shoulder width distance. All the same technique, you're coming up 
And then you can see my knees are kind of wiggling a little bit. That band's trying to pull it back in, but try and keep them out. So you don't have to straighten your knees up all the way. You can stay in that slightly bent position and then come back down. So just up and back down. And same thing, you can kind of sit like I did, or if you just want to do the squat, but if your knees do this, when you come in, then you're not ready for that band because that's going to cause a whole lot of other problems. So make sure we're, if you're looking down that you see that those knees are still staying out nice and wide. And then the last one is going to be a sit to stand, same kind of concept. And so now you're going to use the ball again. So you want to squeeze in and keep that squeeze the whole time. I've had people ask me before, does it matter the size of the ball or the pillow or whatever you're putting in between? It does a little bit because again, you want it to be big enough where your knees stay in about what I call that neutral position, that shoulder width apart. Because if you have something smaller, again, then your knees are going to be coming in. And if you have something too big, it's going to be pushing your knees out. So you want it to be about in that neutral position. So usually a basketball, a soccer ball works pretty well, but if it's something a little bit smaller, that's not going to quite work. But so this time you want to keep that squeeze the whole time. So start with a squeeze, really try and hold that squeeze, and then you're coming in. A lot of times people will let the squeeze go. So really try and keep that squeeze. If you feel like the ball's falling out, you're not squeezing. And then come down, or it's just slipping on your pants. Nice big squeeze, come up, and then back down. So same thing, just about five to start off with. Then you go 10, 15. If you get to 20 or so, then you're probably ready for something else. So there you have it. So those were my top 10 seated hip and knee strengthening exercises. If you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click on the link up here. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.